Hey everybody, I was gonna say welcome to Fashion Friday, but I haven't done one of those in a minute. But I had a second, I was actually on my way to a shoot, and the shoot canceled. Well, they rescheduled. Um, this is the like third time the shoot will have rescheduled, which it's no big deal. It happens all the time, and that kind of led me to think, like, I haven't done a video in a minute. Um, and I also want to talk about, I've wanted to talk about this for a while. I've actually talked about this with my friend Crystal, which if you follow me, you know Crystal's my work wife, she's my tailor, my seamstress, my everything. And we talked about like what we wished our clients knew before walking into a consultation or a meeting or a fitting. So I had the idea to do a quick little video on what your stylist wish you knew. So in this case, I'm going to be definitely aiming this video towards artists and musicians. I've got my notes on my hand and I kind of want to just like go into it. Number one is the number one problem I have with clients all the time. If you lie about your sizes, I will find out. And I am the last person on earth you need to lie to about your sizes. I've had videos where people have walked up on set and either we had worked together before and they gained weight and didn't tell me, even though I always ask, have you gained or lost? I don't care, I just need to know. I've had clients that have gone from like two sizes up, two sizes down. Basically, if your body is changing, I need to know about it. And it's really funny because a lot of my girls, I'm like, okay, what's your cycle? Let's start tracking your cycle. And it's not because I don't want them to get pregnant. Sometimes I do, but it's also like, hey, we need to know when you're gonna be feeling your best during your cycle, when you're gonna be uh, the less bloated, there's all kinds of things. But if you lie about your sizes or you just say, I'm a small, I'm a medium, I will find out and you will find out by being on set and none of the clothes fit you. And then I have to kind of like, yeah, let's just alter it on set. And it's a nightmare. So if you lie about your sizes, I will find out about it. I have a questionnaire now because of this where it's like, give me your measurements. So even then people still don't fill it out. Number two is that I'm not just going shopping, I am investing in 10 years of resources and relationship building and time. It's kind of like, I always relate getting styled for the first time as to buying a house. So if you talk to your realtor and you're like, two bedroom, nice neighborhood, don't know where it is, the realtor puts the time and the effort into tracking down multiple options for you and they call in their friends and they use their resources to get you the top five, top 10, whatever it is, I, I don't watch House Hunters, and then you figure it out. So I'm that person. I'm the one that's friends with the designers. I'm the one that has my name out on the line. If something happens to the clothes, it's on my credit card, not yours. So there's all kinds of things that go into it. And the resources, I've talked about this before, but I haven't been like open about it. Most stylists are in debt and it's because of our clients. So either it's the clients don't pay their invoices on time and we open a credit card to pay bills, which I'm so guilty of doing, or um, I've lost money on red carpets because we needed to add something, we needed to tailor something, we needed to pay for the shipment back and forth. I've lost money on jobs and a lot of my stylist friends are in debt because of their jobs. During this uh, last award show season, I was on a group chat with two of my friends that are also stylists and we were like, oh, we should go out and celebrate, but we're poor. <laughs> I don't like the word poor, but you know what I mean? Like I lost, I've lost so much money on red carpets, but it's good advertisement in the long run. Um, my, oh, okay. Cannot read my own handwriting. The other one is we are not miracle workers. Yes. Having a relationship with a stylist that you trust and admire is very important, but I cannot make you look like Beyonce if you're not Beyonce. A photographer cannot make you look like Beyonce if you are not Beyonce. Basically, what we can do as your creative team is we can do the best job to our abilities of making you look like the best version of yourself in our eyes. So if you agree with that vision, great. If you don't, that's also great. You'll find somebody. I've worked on several shoots where there's been what I call Snapchat dysmorphia, where the second that someone else is in charge of your image and you're not taking a selfie, you don't like what you look like. And it's really funny, I was just talking with a friend of mine who's a photographer, and we were kind of talking about how with Instagram and um, Facetune and all this stuff becoming so prevalent, it's like people get the real images and they're like, that's what I, like, I don't look like that. You look like that without the deer filter on. And this is what you look like and it's great. That's just your face, we can't change it. Um, 
and you're great like you're great as you are you're just in hair and makeup and better clothes and good lighting and just own it i will own every wrinkle and imperfection i want to do a shoot with like all my stretch marks out because i think they're really cute um the other thing is managing expectations when you're working with an artist that not a lot of people know about so if you are a c-list celebrity like i can't think of a c-list off the top of my head you're on a reality show maybe you were famous at one point but you're not famous anymore or you're one of those people where it's like that name sounds familiar you're not going to get pieces that are as good as or by good i mean like high end as ariana grande you know, any of those types artists, that's like the only two modern artists that I actually, Lizzo, you're not going to get those. You're not going to get those because when the designer gives out a dress for red carpet, that's the whole purpose of gifting the, uh, gifting the dress. So Ariana Grande walks down the red carpet. Um, the last Met she wore, that was two Mets ago, she wore Vera Wang. Ariana, who are you wearing? I'm wearing Vera Wang. Custom. The next thing you know, sales go up in Vera Wang. If you put the same dress on someone who is an up-and-comer that no one knows about, that doesn't have that star power underneath them, well, no one's going to get you on the red carpet to ask, who are you wearing? Because no one cares yet. And it sucks, but it's part of the game. So a lot of stylists, what they do is they end up getting designer stuff and they charge it on their credit cards, which I have done, or they end up begging and pleading, or they do what I do, and they make relationships with smaller boutiques, smaller designers who maybe aren't at the top of their game yet, and then they start to work their way up. Um, a really great example of this is Zendaya. Her stylist did the same thing. No one wanted to give her any couture, nothing great when she was coming out. And now I think she's got her own campaign now. Like she's the face of a million things. And now people are clamoring to give her stuff. Um, and there's a round table with her stylist. And I think it's her and Celine Dion. I think it's La Roche styles both of them. I'll have to double check. But anyway, they do a great job. So I also want you guys to think about the time that goes into what your stylist does. I'm up at seven in the morning on a good day, but I'm also constantly tracking FedEx boxes. I've had to bribe the FedEx delivery people and go down to FedEx myself with pizza, with donuts, with coffee to just track down a package that I needed for a shoot. I'm out there. It's really funny. I took Crystal shopping um, two days or Monday, so two days ago. And she had no idea how, when she goes, oh, I need black shoes for tour. I'm like, oh, okay, I know exactly where to go. And I just walked right to them. And she was walking around like, I, I don't know what I'm doing. You're paying for the efficiency and you're paying for not having to do it on your own. The other thing is your stylist is not going to dress you like they do. And I have several clients who are like that boho rocker chic, which is great and I can do it in my sleep. But I also love dressing people in streetwear or dressing people in colors that I would never wear. I hate the color pink with a passion on myself, but I love putting other people in it. I'm here to dress you to the best of my ability with my resources that I have, with the body I've been given, and your vision and mine collectively. So those are a few questions that I wish people would ask their stylist. And those are a few things that I wish that people knew before they went to hire somebody. We need to manage expectations about delivery, manage expectations about our looks, as a client, I would love to look like, you know, 60s era Raquel Welch, but I don't, and that's fine. I'm gonna wear my blazer and my ascot and like call it a day, but I'm not wearing a fur bikini, and it's all right. I will talk to you guys soon. I know that you guys liked my Hack the Mall series. I'm gonna do another one probably on hacking the mall and shopping in person and online. And I don't know if there's any other ideas you guys have, keep them coming. This was a really fun video. Um, so this is all the stuff that was going today. I guess I'm going to leave it. I'm already dressed. What do I do with the rest of my day? Talk to you guys soon. Until then, you wear well.